Here I have a table and a ball on one end of the table, and I'm going to picture rolling this ball across the table. And so it starts here on one side, and what I see, say, a second later is that it's here, a second later it's here, another second later it's here, and then here, and I sort of draw where it is each second as it goes across the table. This is what I mean by sort of a pictorial representation of an event. The ball rolled across the table and I'm drawing a picture of what happens. Now we want to be able to represent this mathematically. We want to be able to then use equations to be able to compare to this experiment to see if they agree to be able to predict future events. And so how to turn this into a mathematical representation is where coordinate systems come from. So a coordinate system is just like, like a ruler and I'm going to visualize a ruler being superimposed on my picture. And this ruler then creates uh, numbers. I ascribe physical positions to numbers, and that allows me to create a mathematical representation. So the one end of my ruler is called the origin, where the zero is. I then need my coordinate system to point in a direction. And so this is the positive direction here with my arrow. Now there's a variable associated with a one-dimensional coordinate system that represents any possible point, and in this case I'll call that x. So I have a positive x in the direction of my arrow, and I've located where the zero is. So this is our ruler, and so it measures things in units of length, and so I will say this is in centimeters. Of course it could be anything. And so I haven't really described what this is, since I'm making it up, I can say what, it, what these distances are, and I'm saying that's 10 centimeters, there's 20, there's 30, 40, and 50. And so now that I've set up my ruler, I see that the ball moved 10 centimeters each second. And given where I established my coordinate system, its initial position was 0, and its the, the next position was 10, etc. So now I can create a new representation for this event. I can create a tabular representation. And what I mean by that is that for time in seconds, there was a position x in centimeters associated with this event that I drew. So at time zero, which which is where I started from, it was at a position zero, and I said one second later it was at this position. So at one second later my ruler says, or my coordinate system says, it was at a position of 10 centimeters. At another second later it was at this position, which my ruler says is 20 centimeters, and then okay we can see where this is going, 440, 550 in seconds and centimeters. So now I have a tabular representation of this event. And of course, what's a tabular representation? I can create a graphical representation. I can have time on one axis with seconds, position on another axis, which is centimeters. Okay, I went ahead and, and graphed that. Here, now I have that table of data representative dots on a graph. I could draw a line through that graph that represents that motion during all periods of time. And now I have a graphical representation of that event. And now I finally can have a mathematical representation of that event. Its position as a function of time was equal to 10 times t, where 10 is in centimeters and t is in seconds. Now for each second I can check this reproduces the table there, and now I have an accurate mathematical representation of that event. And so that's what we're getting at, and where that comes from is the mapping of a coordinate system on to the event that you want to describe.